The S2 provides a great way to get started in robotics, particularly if you've never programmed before. That's because a unique feature of this robot is its ability to be programmed using a graphical user interface, or GUI. Now, this basically means that instead of typing in code to get your robot to do things, you can use a series of tiles or pictures. So today, we'll get you up to speed on how to program your S2 using the GUI so that you can start building your own code. Let's get started. First, we'll need to download the S2 GUI. Instructions for doing so can be found on page 24 of the S2 Robot Startup Guide. But you can also find the software at www.parallax.com go s2 and clicking the GUI icon at the top of the screen. When you open the GUI, you'll see a blank worksheet with two tiles. This top one with the green gear is your start tile, and this black and yellow striped rectangle one is your end tile. All of the things that you'll want your S2 to do will need to go between these two tiles. These icons here to the left are known as your action tiles. Each of these tiles make your program do something. If you hover over each one with your mouse, you'll see a description of what each one does. Icons along the top can be considered more of administrative tiles. They allow you to save or open a worksheet, download your program to the S2, view the observation deck, or open up the help file. Just like the icons on the side, you can hover over each one to get an explanation of what they do. I know you're itching to write your first program, so let's get to it. If you'll notice, the S2 has three bicolor LEDs. Let's start off small and turn some of them on. The action tile to control the LEDs is located here on the left-hand side. Click the icon and then click in the program where you'll want to place it. Remember, it needs to go in between the start and stop tiles. Once you've clicked there, a control box should pop up. And this is where you set the LEDs on or off. Clicking the switch once will turn the LED off, and clicking it again makes this box cover the light. Now this box means the LED will remain in the same state that it was if set earlier in the program. For our first program, let's not get too crazy and just turn the far left LED on. When you're done setting the LED states, click the green check mark to accept the changes. Once accepted, you'll see the LED states shown in your program on the action tile. Now let's go ahead and run our program. Click the copy program to scribbler tile at the top of the screen to load the program onto your S2. Once you've done that, the left LED should be on. Now say we want to go crazy and turn all of the LEDs on. Try to contain yourself as we'll need to modify our LED action tile. To do so, click the finger icon on the left side of your screen and then right click on the LED tile. An edit control box will appear. Click the far left button to edit the LED states and the same control box that we saw before should pop up. Let's turn them all on and run the program. So now we've got all of our LEDs on, which is cool and all, but what if we wanted to blink them? Well, we'll need to turn an LED on, wait, and then turn it off. To insert a pause, click the hourglass icon here on the left and insert it into your program, after the LED action tile. This makes the wait a while control box pop up. Dragging the scroll bar up increases the delay and down decreases the delay. You can also click above or below the bar to increase or decrease in 0.1 second intervals. Let's set this delay in our program to be one second. Now we'll need to turn the LEDs off. To do so, click the LED action tile here on the left again, place it in your program after the delay, and turn all of the LEDs off. Let's add another one second time delay too, just for practice. So as the program is now, the LEDs will turn on for a second and then turn off, which is kind of lame. So say we want this to repeat a couple more times. All we have to do is actually just copy the tiles and then we can repeat the same actions over and over. To do so, click the finger icon again and left click on all four tiles to select them. Once they're all selected, right click to get the edit control box to appear. This first button here copies all the tiles that are selected. Click this button and then click the green check mark to accept your action. Now just click where you want to insert the copied cells. You can keep clicking and copy the tiles as many times as you want. I'll just click twice so the lights blink three times. Before running this program, you may notice that this last pause isn't really needed. So let's delete it. 
To do so, click the finger icon again and right click on the last delay tile. Select the trash can icon and click the green check mark to accept your action. When you're ready, run the program. Now, the amount of tiles needed to just blink these LEDs three times is kind of ridiculous. If only there was some kind of loop that we could put those tiles in so we didn't have to just keep repeating ourselves and repeating ourselves and repeating ourselves. Oh wait, there is. First, let's get rid of some of these tiles. We'll only need four of them. Uh, one to turn the LEDs on uh, to wait for a second, another to turn the LEDs off and then wait for another second. Then let's insert a loop into our program. That's this blue button right here. Place it in the program and it will ask how many times you want the code to repeat. I'm gonna set it to 10. However, we don't have anything inserted between the loop, which means that nothing will actually repeat. So we'll need to move our light blinking code in between these tiles. To do so, select the four light blinking tiles and right click. Now click the scissor icon to cut this code from your program. Then click between the looping icons to paste your code and make your LEDs blink 10 times. Run it and see what happens. But wait, there's more. Let's take a look at some of the additional features of the S2 GUI software. First off, this icon of the S2 with a halo above it restores the S2 to its original factory program with its eight demo modes. So you never have to worry about losing it. This big question mark opens the help file, which contains a brief tutorial on using the GUI as well as detailed explanations of each tile. This is a great resource in case you get stuck. And lastly, this button here opens the S2 observation deck, a really neat tool that allows you to monitor the state of each of the S2 robot sensors. This screen on the far left monitors the states of the IR LEDs, and a wall appears if an object is detected. These middle bars measure the amount of light coming into the phototransistors. And this last screen on the right monitors the line following sensors. Light green if over a white surface and black if over a black surface. Now obviously blinking LEDs only scratches the surface of what you can do with the S2 robot. But hopefully this tutorial kind of gave you enough information so that you feel comfortable playing around with the software yourself. And check back soon for more tutorials on how to program your S2 with the GUI software. And until then, happy scribbling!